I am not a speedrunner. I am not an uber expert. I am, however, a veteran of Monster Hunter that usually prioritizes fun over min-maxing. However, this doesn't mean that I don't recognize what weapons can put out mad damage. I like fun builds, uh, but I also like meta builds. I believe it's the choice of the player whether or not they want to play for fun or style or whether they want to push the limits of optimizing the big damage. Today we're looking at the most definitive tier list out there for the weapons of Monster Hunter World. So whether you're a newcomer looking to learn what makes the weapon so good, or a veteran who just wants to hear my take on a tier list, this video will serve as your guide as to why they're so awesome in the first place. But not only do we have my tier list to go over, but we also have a community voted tier list. You all voted and told me what makes these weapons so good, and today I'll also be reading through your comments and going over the results. So without further ado, this is the ultimate definitive Monster Hunter World weapon tier list for 2024 before Monster Hunter Wilds comes out and we all eventually switch over to that game. And starting off with the sword and shield, now, this weapon is extremely fast. It can change direction at a moment's notice. You can also block with it in case of emergencies. This weapon can even use items while unsheathed, which it's the only weapon in the game that can actually do that. You can also apply stun damage through shield bashes with blunt damage, you know, just like hammers and your hunting horns and stuff or knockouts. But it's also a great candidate for elemental damage or status ailment, DPS and stuff like that because it is fast hitting like we went over before. You can also access mount damage without the use of terrain. It has access to a jump, although it is a part of a combo for the most part. It also has an iframe evade move, which is what leads into that jumping combo, and it also technically has infinite combos. It's a good candidate for a support weapon too, because of all of these reasons, and it still deals mad damage with the perfect rush combo. It also has a really high skill ceiling. Doing the perfect rush isn't one of the easier combos, as you have to do the rhythm game music-esque uh, timings of the buttons, along with the charges of the swings and stuff like that. But once you get the perfect rush down and you get the controls down, and learn how to continue the perfect rush into what is like the infinite perfect rush the sword and shield really really shines as a weapon and I feel like a lot a lot of people pick this weapon up and it's a little upsetting to see it was one of my favorite weapons and I wanted to do it justice in this tier list video as in the last tier list video I ranked it in C tier for some reason I don't know what the hell I was thinking this weapon is absolutely broken, and if you're not using this weapon or if you haven't given it a try, I suggest it. The only cons of this weapon though, however, are it's very, very short reach. Oh man, is it short. And it also needs clutch claw boost decoration or skill if you want to tenderize on one go. Although, you don't have to do that because it does have the claw uppercut, which leads into a guaranteed tenderized every time. So. It's not exactly necessary, but the sword and shield, for the most part, doesn't really have a lot of cons. It's great for beginners, it's great for experts, it can stun, it can deal elemental damage, status DPS, like I said before, you can use items while it's in sheath, it can block if I didn't say that again. It's just one of the best weapons in the game, man, and it's extremely underrated. The sword and shield, S tier. Moving on to the Great Sword, uh, it has the highest on hit damage in the game through the use of the charge slashes and the true charge slash. It can also block, and the block is deceptively strong, actually. I know a lot of people are gonna say, well, why would you block with it, Terrorizer? Well, I mean, well, it's because you have access to the tackle, which is a hyper armor animation where your hunter can tackle through any move, kind of like invincibility frames, but, uh, but it is hyper armor to be specific. You'll still take damage and stuff like that. But uh, blocking still does have its uses with the great sword. Sometimes you need to block in a pinch. It's also the safe option. But the tackle, when you're a pro with it, it can get you through monster roars or it is a panic button. If you're already charging a weapon swing, you're not able to block, so you can tackle really good. Um, the great sword is also a really long weapon, has extremely great reach. It's great for severing tails. The great sword is also one of the best candidates for the Frostcraft playstyle, which is kind of an end game iceborne playstyle and without getting into spoilers you're not able to access this until uh, the end game of iceborne it can also be built to stun monsters through the skill punishing draw which adds knockout to your draw attacks and since you can charge the great sword uh, with a draw attack it makes it an absolute monster in the draw attack play style and so speaking of that it does have the strongest draw attacks in the game besides the sword and shield being able to go into the perfect rush 
Uh, this weapon also has a really high skill ceiling. And the reason being is that if you know the monster's patterns really well, the greatsword really shines with players who are knowledgeable about the weapon that they're using, but also the monster's patterns. If you know the monster's patterns very well, you can line up your charge slashes and your true charge slashes and not miss most of the time due to a monster moving out of the way suddenly, because you might have prepared for it already. And thanks to the single on-hit damage, this weapon is also really good at capitalizing on well time knockdowns of the monsters or when they fall into traps and such like that and another pro is that it can also launch players but speaking of the cons it can launch players it's also slow f they're talking super heavy like i said in my old tier list video this weapon is like really heavy like 75 percent equip load dark souls heavy if you catch my drift Besides that though, the great sword with drawbacks, it doesn't really have a whole lot of utility. You can't really build it for elemental damage or status effect, but with the sheer damage that this weapon can output, along with the tackle and being able to block and the extreme reach of it, it really doesn't have a whole lot of drawbacks. Great sword, S tier. Heading into the long sword, this is what everybody likes to call the weeb weapon. You know, actually, I don't really know why we call it a weeb weapon. It's just a really long, large big katana it's not like you see this kind of stuff in anime you see like smaller katanas so where are we getting this from you guys maybe we should quell the weeb longsword talk or something i mean like i'm a weeb but i've never looked at it that way all right but getting back on track here the longsword is capable of pretty good damage it's not the highest in the game but extremely good damage for how easy the combos are and speaking of which the combos are very easy you literally have to press one button over and over and over and maybe have to press a different button but also over and over and over if you want to do a different type of combo which is the which is the spirit slash combo and all that uh, but this weapon also has extremely great reach. It also has an extremely high skill ceiling. I believe it to be one of the higher skill ceilings in the game. It also has a special sheath stance, which adds to the fun of the weapon. It has two attacks with iframes. It also has great mobility through attack animations with the stepping forward and stuff like that and, and slashing through the monster with the round slash. It's just an extremely flashy weapon. It also rewards a patient playstyle. The patience comes from lining up your invincibility frames through your attacks, which actually leads into more damage with the longsword and buffing it even further if you can time it properly. It also rewards a very aggressive playstyle though at the same time, as the more you attack with this weapon, the better damage that you get through self-weapon buffs. So combining this, if you can play patiently, but also aggressively at the same time, we're talking like the levels of like a speedrunner who's just a master of this weapon. That's why I think this weapon is, uh, well, it has one of the higher skill ceilings in the game. I really do believe that. But coming to some of the drawbacks, um, some of the attack animations are a bit slow, actually. In fact, its hardest hitting move, the Helm Splitter, is extremely slow and very interruptible. It also needs Clutch Claw Boost to tenderize easier. There is no way to guarantee a tenderize on a single claw shot to attack. This weapon also trips players frequently. I'm a big advocate for slotting in your brace decoration for the flinch free skill. Um, it makes it so that other players can't knock you down or hit you while you're doing things. And I think that we should actually be talking about that more. The truth is, is that this weapon does trip players frequently, but there's a whole other side of the argument where you can literally alleviate any problems from any other players if you just equip one decoration. And I'm a bigger advocate for that. But the fact remains, this weapon does trip people a lot. Longsword, A tier. Heading into the dual blades, uh, the pros of this weapon. Oh man, there's a lot. So the dual blades are somewhat beginner friendly. Um, they have extremely fast attacks, very easy combos, flashy combos, infinite combos, has access to demon and arch demon stance for your fun and style, like I said before. Uh, it can combo into a guaranteed tenderized claw attack as well. It has fantastic mobility. Uh, you can bay blade along the monster's back. It also rewards Dark Souls playstyle of stamina management, in my opinion anyways. The dual blades also have access to the evade shot, which is an amazing move. As long as you have slinger ammo equipped, you can perform the evade shot after most attack animations and go in the direction you want. And it's a pretty far leap, and it also deals a little bit of damage at the same time. It also looks really cool. 
But speaking of the best pros of the dual blades, it's actually the DPS. The dual blades host some of the highest damage per second in the game, and it's mostly through elemental and status effects. As this weapon does attack very fast, you're better able to utilize elemental damage and even status effects through that. Um, more hits means that you're proccing more, and the weapons are kind of just meant for elemental damage builds and stuff like that. Some of the cons going into this weapon, uh, you have a constant stamina drain whenever you are in demon mode. And so that kind of makes it so that you need to build around stamina skills, or at least it's very highly recommended for me to at least have a few to alleviate the stamina drain. But the dual blades also have very, very short reach. Just like the sword and shield, it's kind of hard to hit tails and stuff like that sometimes. But otherwise, the dual blades, sword and shield, they're the best toenail clippers that you can find. Um, enough said. The dual blades, D for dual. Just kidding, we're going all the way up to A tier. Coming into the hammer, ah, the pros of this one. This one's considered a heavy weapon, although you can run around like a white weapon can. And because it is a heavy weapon, this is a guaranteed tenderize every single time you do do a claw attack. This weapon is also solely focused on the face is the place playstyle. You get lots of knockouts due to this as this weapon is extremely blunt and deals a ton of knockout damage. It also boasts extremely good raw damage though, and it's pretty good for mobility in terms of the attack movements. This weapon can also charge attacks while you're moving unlike the greatsword, and most people think this weapon is very oonga boonga, but in reality you need to have a big brain on monster attacks and timings and be evasive as fuck to always be landing blows on the head. I truly believe this weapon does reward big brains or at least veterans or people who are very familiar with monsters timings and their movements and stuff like that. And I kind of respect hammer players for going head to head with the monster, quite literally. You also have the spin to win, and let's be real, this is one of the sickest attacks in the games. And it can also launch players. But going into the cons though, it can also launch players. Can unfortunately also be outshined sometimes by some other knockout stun potential weapons. Um, kind of silly if you ask me, but it is true, it can be outshined. Your stamina also gets drained while you're charging attacks. Um, it's not like the biggest con in the world, but it is a drawback of the weapon to balance it out. It also has pretty short reach. The weapon might be girthy in its size at the tip of it. Oh, what the hell am I saying? But no, it's true. This weapon is a very thick weapon with two C's, but it's not very long, which means that it's kind of hard to be hitting all the time, or sometimes your reach just isn't there. It isn't the worst reach in the game, but it is something to note. The Ham Bam Hammer. Uh, B for Bonker? Hmm, the A tier. Next we have the Giga Chad weapon, I mean the Hunting Horn. The Hunting Horn has stun potential just like the hammer. It's a great weapon for exhausting monsters, although it's not very relevant in Monster Hunter World due to the wall banging and such with the clutch claw and the slinger burst. Monsters are enraged all the time and when they do get enraged, they gain all of their energy back. So exhausting monsters, not the most typical thing, I guess, but it is to be noted that it is a pro of the hunting horn. The hunting horn is also just a weapon that can play tunes to buff or even heal yourself and your allies. It's considered a light weapon in terms of mobility too, making it very good for traversing the map. It has better damage than most players think. And speaking to the crowd of the hunting horn, I've got it straight this time. This weapon is not a support weapon but it has great supportive capabilities. This weapon is best utilized in the playstyle of people who want to help others, but also want to jam it out a little bit, or want to have good reach, but also be able to buff without having to use any items or anything like that. This is a very, very, very unique weapon, and I practically respect all Hunting Horn players who play this. They're the ones who give us buffs and stuff like that, and sometimes they can give us nice, unique buffs that only the Hunting Horn can provide. This is a very, very slept on weapon, very good. Uh, it's very good for solo play, although you might not think it. I highly suggest that you give it a try. The Hunting Horn crowd is one of the smallest crowds in Monster Hunter World, and I think it deserves to get bumped up a lot in terms of how many players are using it. And uh, yeah, this weapon, I just mad respect to it. Very awesome weapon. 
Uh, a lot of people have the wrong idea about it. Um, but otherwise, the last pro of the hunting horn is every horn has different notes that can be played, meaning you get different buffs. Going into the cons, however, every horn has different notes that can be played, meaning different buffs. So that's kind of like a pro and a con. Depends on how you look at the hunting horn. But some hunting horns are better for certain monsters, or some have only certain notes, which means different melodies, which means different buffs. Depends on the hunting horn completely. So that is a bit of a learning curve, and you need to have multiple builds set up if you want to take on different monsters. But there are some hunting horns in the game that can give you very good notes notes that are generally good for every fight in the game um, but otherwise the hunting horn i think in my opinion is really hard to use um, it's really hard to understand what buffs you want or what buffs are even good for you and your teammates if you're playing solo if you're playing multiplayer um, knowing the optimal damage combos and also needing to memorize melodies for the buffs or even have a cheat sheet which Monster Hunter World does have a cheat sheet on screen but it's kind of a hassle to be looking at it to remember what it is all the time but not too many cons to the hunting horn except it being uh, a bit hard to use with having a very very unique weapon mechanic which ultimately I think is for the better of the weapon. Hunting Horn, this is actually tough for me. I wanted to go A tier, um, but considering how good this weapon can be in the right hands and its general versatility and utility, we're giving it S tier. Now, going into the Lance, this is a weapon that also not a lot of people use. The Lance has the best defensive capabilities in the game. Yes, I said it. It also has extremely long reach, and because of this, it can somewhat pinpoint target wings and tails with upward thrusts. It has a running charge attack, which you can jump into the air, which is just, I don't know, it looks sick, man. <laughs> it also has a claw counter attack through the perfect guard, um, meaning you'll get an instant claw mount, and you can go straight into your uh, claw attack, of course. It has extremely high damage uptime when played optimally because this weapon can really stick to monsters like glue with its defensive play style. It's actually a very very aggressive weapon because of this. People think it's a defensive weapon and I've been guilty of that in the past too. As they say the best offense is a great defense. If the monster can't interrupt you and what you're doing you can just poke at the monster all day long and while those single pokes don't do massive damage like the great sword swings or something like that if it's consistent and steady over time you'll actually outdo a lot of other players when playing optimally it also kind of has unique combo potential too in my opinion don't at me at that i i think it does it also has really good mobility uh people don't realize that the mobility of this weapon is actually pretty good it comes through the charging running attack with this weapon you can kind of do it whenever you need to to get back up to the monster but what's nice about this is that you can stop to block mid run at any point that's why this weapon is so good. You don't really need to sheath it when you need to get back over to the monster. You can just charge back in. You also look like a Giga Chad when you're using this weapon. So, you know, that's one thing. This is also one of the best weapons for utilizing the offensive guard skill, which also gives you tons of extra damage when you block an attack with really good timing. Some of the cons, though, is that it arguably, arguably, I'm saying, has the lowest DPS in the game when gameplay is optimized with every weapon at least. This weapon can also have some bad matchups in the end game. It can also be very clunky and awkward to use at first, um, but otherwise I think this weapon is also very beginner friendly. If you want to have a slower paced experience with the game, and not even that slow honestly, don't even listen to that. This weapon is right up your alley and I think that you should give it a try at the very least. It's a very defensive playstyle, but like I said, if you can play very defensively, that means you can get your guaranteed damage and this weapon can outshine other weapons in the right hands. The Lance! I want to put this in A tier so bad. I so bad want to. But we're gonna go to a high B. Next going into the Gun Lance. The Gun Lance has many different play styles depending on what shelling type you actually use. Um, there are a few different shelling types. There's the long type, the wide type, and the normal type. This is a weapon that also has very great reach. It has extremely great defense, not as good as the Lance, but still very good. 
It offers a very unique weapon playstyle, unlike any other weapon in the game. What other weapon has the tip explode all over the monster? What the hell am I saying, actually? What? This weapon is also very mobile with proper weapon knowledge. Um, just like the Lance, a lot of people might think that it's slow, clunky in the movement department. But in the right hands, if Gunlance players know what they're doing with this weapon, it actually has good mobility. A pro to this weapon having shelling and explosive damage is that explosive damage is fixed, and that can be great in the right situations. For example, sometimes blades don't do a lot of damage in certain parts of the monster, but with shelling, the damage is the same no matter where you hit, as long as it is hitting the monster. This weapon can also still cut tails, as it is still a bladed weapon. This weapon also has infinite combos with the use of the quick reload animation to reload your shelling. Um, it has the worm stake, which can give extra damage for you and teammates. It has the super mega, the slinger capacity worm stake, I can't remember the name, but the upgraded version of the worm stake, which can give extra damage for you and your teammates whenever somebody hits it with an explosion, kind of like the light bow gun we'll go over later in a bit, but that weapon can drop mines or wyvern mines on the ground. And because of the worm stake, it also benefits highly from the slinger capacity skill. Uh, very, very good skill for this weapon. And this weapon is just a super badass weapon compared to most weapons in the game. Plus it also has wyvern fire, which is also a super awesome attack. Some of the cons, however, though, is that that same wyvern fire can blast your teammates. Um, it also requires an advanced play style. Um, like I said, you need to have proper weapon knowledge or at least skill or experience with this weapon to be pretty good with it, in my opinion. Especially comes to uh, being mobile with the weapon and knowing optimal damage and when to use shelling and what kind of shelling you are using. Um, and some of the weapon attacks can have some really long animation times. But again, that just ties back into being uh, very knowledgeable about the weapon, like I said before. So uh, this weapon, it's not for beginners. I used to think that, um, but this weapon, it really shines in the right hands. And uh, if you pick up this weapon because you think it looks cool or you just want to be doing big damage or you just want to be exploding and have a, a very unique play style, I highly suggest you stick with it for a while because it only shines as you get better with it. Gun Lance, G tier? Uh, I guess we don't have that. Um, B tier. Heading into the light bow gun, the pros of this weapon, extremely mobile weapon. This weapon has the best mobility of the game. There is no denying it. You can literally run around while you're shooting. You have access to different elemental damage through the ammo. Um, you also have access to status ailments because of that. It has access to knockouts through sticky ammo, which can outperform the hammer sometimes. Like I was saying before with the hammer, there are some weapons that will shine it sometimes. But typically this is through a build that prioritizes only sticky ammo, so the damage isn't really the best. But it also has access to the evade reload, which is specific to the light bow gun, unlike its counterpart. It also rewards a very keep away play style. So if you want to play a more um, third person shooter esque play style, the light bow gun and even the heavy bow gun, which we'll get into, are extremely awesome weapons for that. And uh, I think that they're very accessible, especially the light bow gun for newer players into the series. And I think more people should give the light bow gun a try. Uh, it's very fun and it's kind of more of a casual play style, in my opinion. That's not a bad thing though. I love the light bow gun personally. I'm a veteran of Monster Hunter. I consider myself a pretty good player with a lot of weapons. The light bow gun though is like the weapon I can always fall back on if I just want to have an easy time, if I'm not trying to complete quests as fast as I can. Uh, it's the safest weapon in my opinion due to all these reasons. Um, it also has access to Wyvern Blast, which can be utilized by other party members. It's a great candidate for a support playstyle due to it being a light weapon and being able to sheathe it very quickly. You can actually still deal massive damage in the right hands. Uh, you don't need to load your special ammo with this, unlike its counterpart. And you can also cut tail still with slice ammo. 
Uh, some of the cons though, the overall DPS is low due to it favoring a mobile playstyle like I said. Um, good luck mounting a monster with this weapon as well. <laughs> you also are going to need Clutch Claw Boost Decoration to tenderize with this on the first tenderize if the, all you're doing is claw shotting and attacking like I said before. And it only actually has one special ammo type, unlike its counterpart, the Heavy Bow Gun. But otherwise, this weapon is really, really, really good. You're not going for big max damage with this weapon or the fastest hunts ever or stuff like that. But this weapon offers a unique play style that I... Uh, a lot of other weapons just really don't, man. The light bow gun? We're gonna go into A tier. Going into the counterpart of the light bow gun is the heavy bow gun. The heavy bow gun has arguably the best damage in the game. Arguably. It has access to pretty much everything the light bow gun can use. It can be modded through the bow gun customizations with shields, which is broken on spread ammo playstyle. It's kind of like a shotgun playstyle, but you also have a shield on your gun. So if a monster hits you, you're just chilling. You attack back with a blast to the face. It has, it has access to stun through sticky ammo, just like the light bow gun. You can still afflict status ailments. Um, it's the only weapon capable of cluster bomb ammo or, or the cluster bomb playstyle in general. Uh, it's seen better days in the base game of Monster Hunter World, but Cluster Bomb playstyle is pretty unique and cool. And unlike the Light Bow Gun, this weapon also has access to two different special ammo types. You have Wyvern Heart and Wyvern Fire. Wyvern Heart is more like a Rambo machine gun playstyle, which is my favorite, honestly, I think, of the two. But Wyvern Snipe is also really cool. You get into a prone position and shoot one really strong shot into a monster, which pierces and then explodes in the end. Also very cool looking. Actually, you know, I don't know which one is my favorite. They're both super cool, man. This weapon also rewards a very keep away play style if you are good at spacing with this weapon properly. It also typically has larger ammo clips than the light bow gun. Uh, it can trivialize a lot of end game monsters with the proper shield build like I was talking about before. It also has access to the special scope, which makes your view kind of sucky, but also adds a ton of damage. So if you're okay with that, it's only a pro for the weapon. It can also still cut tails, just like the light bow gun through slicing ammo. Uh, some of the cons, however, though, is the heavy bow gun is extremely, extremely heavy, which means you can get whooped if you don't have shield mods equipped or if you don't have skills like evade window or evade extender, use some extra invulnerability frames or just to have your rolls go further to have proper spacing like we talked about before. Some of the cons though is the special scope attachment like I said before, it makes your view, I don't know, I used to be a fan of this view before but I'm not so much a fan of it anymore. Uh, it's not my favorite by far. Also, cluster bomb playstyle and the wyvern fire ammo that this gun can produce can also blast party members, so you gotta watch out for that. The heavy bow gun? A well-deserved S tier. This thing is a monster. With the bow, this is one of the fan favorites of Monster Hunter, actually. I think that it is lacking a little bit in Monster Hunter World. Let's get into the pros first. The bow also arguably has the best damage in the game with the proper build, that is. It's one of the best candidates for elemental damage as well, just like the dual blades. It also has an extremely great keep away play style. It has infinite ammo, unlike your bow guns. Uh, bow guns, normal ammo for each gun actually is also infinite. But the bow only does one type of ammo, which is your arrows basically. And But you have access to coatings, kind of like bow gun ammo. Coatings are a little different though, as they apply. Coatings are a little different though, also kind of similar. They apply the same kind of effects, but only through status ailments, as bows inherently actually have an elemental damage that they can do all the time. Unlike bow guns, where you actually need to be firing specific elemental uh, ammo to get that elemental damage. The weapon dashes are extremely fast with this weapon as well. Like we said before, this is a very, very mobile weapon. Um, the bow is one of the more mobile weapons in the game. Uh, and it also rewards a very keep away play style because of this. It can also make great use of slinger ammo for strong slinger burst dragon piercer attacks. It depends on what kind of ammo that you have loaded into your slinger but it enhances the piercer attacks, like I said. Very, very strong attacks. You also don't really need to charge them as long as the typical normal dragon piercer. But some of the cons with this weapon, this weapon is extremely skill dependent. There's a huge difference in damage due to not having proper builds, and it can be extremely weak early game, unfortunately, due to this. 
Um, this weapon also eats up your stamina a ton. These all kind of tie into each other. If you don't have the proper damage skills or setups, if you don't have the proper stamina usage skills and stuff like that, um, this weapon can be kind of hard to get into. It's very lacking. I think, I think it has the potential to be one of the worst weapons in the game. If you are not end game or you do not have really good builds set up in the first place, but when you do have those builds online, and you're near the end game or you just got a really good build early game, this weapon can shred like no other. The bow, straight into B tier. I'm sorry, bow users. I'm sorry, I had to do it to the bow. B for bow, right? Now talking about the Switch Axe. The Switch Axe is a weapon that was introduced in Monster Hunter Tri and remains one of my favorites as well as a fan favorite. It rewards an extremely aggressive playstyle as this weapon doesn't really actually have a whole lot of defensive capabilities. Actually, it doesn't have any. It has extremely fantastic reach no matter the weapon form. Um, it does have two weapon forms though, uh, through two weapon stances, the axe mode and the sword mode. And these modes can suit the fight as you need. It can also knock out monsters through the vials of the weapon. And because this weapon does have two different play styles, it means a lot more versatility and, and fun in my eyes. This is a weapon there you need to build up your sword modes gauge to be able to go into sword mode to do proper or really good damage with it at least. And the sword mode does come with a natural mind's eye skill effect which means that your weapon will never bounce off of a monster due to hard hide or something like that. Um, it also is capable of infinite combos, so like some of the other weapons in this game. And this is the, also the only weapon capable of one of the easiest ways to solo Fatalis and other endgame monsters like that. If your sword mode is powered up, whenever you clutch claw into a monster, you can do the zero sum discharge attack, which is basically just a stab into the monster leading up into an eventual explosion and damage ticking all the way in between. It's a really awesome attack. It also doesn't require a lot of set up and commitment to deal damage unlike its counterpart which we will go over soon some of the cons though with this weapon is that the switch axe like i said it's lacking in defensive capabilities it's a very very aggressive weapon um, the sidestep hops have poor iframes um, they have gotten a little better over time if i remember correctly somebody will please let me know in the comments down below and also surprisingly, it's not very mobile, even in axe form. The running is pretty good, but the rolls aren't very good. And like I said before, the sidestep hops, very poor iframes, and it just has very little defensive options overall. But it does have some good utility through the type of switch axe that you're using. And uh, it can be very, very strong in the right and capable hands. And is also an awesome candidate for a single player run. The Switch Axe, well, I want to put it almost in B tier. I feel like that's too harsh. This thing still puts out mat damage, so A tier. Coming into the Insect Glaive, this is one of my new favorite weapons in the game, I think. Um, this weapon has unrivaled mobility. We were talking about the Light Bow Gun before, or the Dual Blades. I think the Insect Glaive beats it out, but doesn't necessarily outshine the other ones, actually, because the Insect Glaive is the only weapon capable of uh, launching itself into the air at any point. Unlike the Sword and Shield, which has access to a jump attack, the Insect Glaive literally can propel itself into the air. You can even do a dash in the air and attack in the air. And if you can keep a combo going, then you won't exit the air for a pretty long time with this weapon. Because you're airborne so much as well, um, it's the king of mounts. You get a lot of mounts with this weapon. It really shines against aerial monsters because of its aerial capabilities. It also shines against very very large monsters due to its aerial capabilities. Um, just like, you know, Safi Jiva, Xeno Jiva, Shari Shvalda. It also has pretty respectable damage per second when on the ground through the proper buffs that you need to acquire with this weapon. It could be used as some sort of support weapon through healing clouds of this weapon, depending on how your Insect Glaive is set up, although that's not like the best, but it also gained the aerial downward thrust attack, which marks monsters automatically. It also deals mad damage with the follow-up once you do reach the ground. It also has extremely great attack range. Um, some of the cons though is the aerial mode kind of leaves you defenseless. 
kind of. You can still obviously dash around in the air to evade attacks, but um, you have to commit to the attacks that you are doing when you do this weapon. There's no canceling out of them for the most part. You also have to get your Kinsect buffs to properly access a lot of the moveset of this weapon. You need to target different body parts of the monsters to get all three buffs. The most important by far is the red damage buff, which comes from hitting the head mostly with your Kinsect and returning that to you. And because of that, um, you don't have access to all of the moveset until you do get that red buff. But once you do, you're online, baby. Surprisingly, also, this weapon has one of the longer sheath animations. Very odd. Um, I've always thought of this weapon as maybe being a good candidate for a support weapon, maybe. Um, due to it being super agile, but yeah much longer sheath animation than you might expect Otherwise a really 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 solid weapon that is pretty overlooked I think and honestly like I said I've been trying this out a lot recently and I've got to say uh, this weapon is very very unique and offers a really cool playstyle that I think solo players and multiplayer players um, would really have a really good time with the insect glaive a tier Coming into the Charge Blade, though, this is the last weapon on our list. It's also an extremely big fan favorite of the series. It also is uh, talked up to be one of the best weapons in the game. Let's go over the pros and cons, though, and we'll see where I fall with this, though. The Charge Blade, starting off, has fantastic defensive options through shielding, guard points, and counters, even. It also rewards a very patient, big brain weapon management play style. Um, it has multiple distinct play styles, which you can switch between on the fly if you want. It's also a decently mobile weapon. It can be built very differently depending on the files that the weapon comes with. It's a strong candidate for great elemental builds. It can also knock out monsters. It has big payoff into one of the strongest attacks in the game, which is the Super Ant Elemental Discharge. And in my opinion, this weapon has the highest skill ceiling in the game. That is my opinion, but I think that it's pretty accurate for the most part. This is a very, very hard weapon to use though. You have a lot of weapon management, like I said before. You have to charge your vials with this weapon. You have to store them into your shield. You have to charge them again to be able to access your super amped elemental discharge through uh, normal means anyways. You could also charge the sword with your vials if you want. You can also go into what is known as Savage Axe Mode, which is a whole nother thing. Um, this weapon has a lot of weapon management, like I said before. And for some players, including myself, I don't like all of the stuff that you have to do to get this weapon set up. But that doesn't mean that this weapon is bad at all. This weapon is one of the better weapons in Monster Hunter. It just depends on the playstyle that you're looking for. For instance, if you miss that strongest attack, the SAED, you just wasted so much time. And it requires a lot of literal charging to get the weapon set up for proper damage, like I said. Um, so getting access to your stronger moves can be a bit of a hassle, especially if you're not able to capitalize on it. And finally, the Charge Blade. It gets a well-deserved S tier, although I'm not a big fan of this weapon myself, um, but I cannot deny its power. Well, there you have it, guys. This is my definitive tier list. I think I thought about a lot of avenues uh, these weapons can take, and I believe that there is really no bad weapon in Monster Hunter, even though these weapons that I have in B tier. Uh, B stands for badass, as far as you're concerned. Um, there's not really anything wrong with these weapons. Um, it's just that some can do more than others, but sometimes you want something specific and focused. So the bow doesn't really lose out to something like the hunting horn if it does something completely different, am I right? But with all that said, um, we'll get into some comparisons later. For now, let's see what you guys had to say in the community voted tier list. Okay, so starting off with the sword and shield, it looks like what you guys had to say is the sword and shield is A tier, but let's figure out why. DB Hemlock says, the sword and shield in Monster Hunter World Iceborne deserves S tier. Not only is it unbelievably versatile and fast, but Perfect Rush dishes out damn near greatsword levels of damage. It's absolutely amazing. I have to agree with DB Hemlock. But let's go down and see some other things. 
S tier all day, fast, able to change attack direction on a whim, but just like I said, quick access to items, can mount better than Insect Glaive, has been proven mathematically, so maybe I'm wrong about the Insect Glaive, can block, somehow people forget this, slashing and knockout damage, good at elemental and status effects due to fast attack speed. Sword and Shield is great for new hunters to get the hang of and for veterans to master. It looks like we have a lot of good comments here, um, but it's still got an A tier, so let's put it in the A tier. Next we have the Great Sword with a 66% voted rate uh, for the S tier. Let's see why though. S tier for sure. Badass looks. Simple moves, but very hard to master. Requires perfect knowledge of the monsters. S tier for the best. I'm not, parentheses. So we got someone who's trying to be real here, Spawn229. B or A tier for learning hunters, we've all been here. Yeah, I think this is a very good weapon. I think it is S tier for sure. Chewbacca Chunks here says, the Great Sword is such a unique weapon. It can be a rough experience at first, you are learning how to use it properly. At first, it feels really bad to feel like you are doing basically no damage, having a hard time getting your big attacks to actually land. But once you actually start getting good with the weapon and learning all the punish windows of specific monsters, and you start actually reliably landing your big damage, the feeling is unrivaled. True Charge Slash is one of the most satisfying attacks in the game. Great Sword is an excellent weapon that requires a lot of game knowledge to make work, and reward your growing game knowledge in an incredibly satisfying way. But because it is so reliant on very game-specific knowledge of the monster's movesets, you either feel like you are doing next to nothing to a monster if you aren't very good, or you know all the ins and outs and can absolutely obliterate monsters. There isn't too much in between, and I have to agree with this. Code the Toad also says, after playing Greatsword for a long time, you can freely transition to using any other weapon comfortably because you literally have to learn timing, placement, monster positioning, and movement. Can knock out with tackle and slap, and also you can very easily make glaive users have existential crisis by stealing all their mount. Plus, this is the big dick damage we all love. You get the wake-ups that explode the monster's face or chop tails in one go, and it's the most empowering weapon in the series. Iconic to say the least, it's Platinum G rank Ultra Instinct S plus tier. I have to agree, Code the Toad. Great sword into the S tier. For the dual blades, looks like we have an A tier. I think S, the amount of damage for the hits you do is really good, plus crazy mobility and combos. Enough said from Pickle Juice here. I wonder 1893 says, S tier in my opinion, one of the highest DPS in the game alongside with being the best elemental weapons. You're extremely quick, agile, and you have your demon mode, which you're going to use all the time for maximum damage output. Only downside with dual blades is its range, but up close it's easily an S tier weapon. Plus you, uh, plus you can iframe so easily with the dashes in your demon and arch demon mode. That said, however, it looks like we did get an A tier for the dual blades. It might be due to it not having utility from all the votes. So we're going to A tier with this one. You guys voted the longsword S tier as well, with 10,000 votes on this one. Hypersteel9821, a chat of the channel and longtime supporter, says, As much as people hate being flinched by longsword users, it has insane damage. A parry. And, uh, well, anime moveset. So, yeah, I think it's S tier. Thus Malone says, I feel it's S tier solo when you have 100% of the monster's attention. I personally think it's more of an A tier and multi due to less EI counters slash ease of countering and predicting. And I have to agree with this a lot, actually. Looks like uh, Rocky here also says, special sheath, foresight slash. Plus you look fucking awesome. So, you know, there's that. So you guys voted the longsword S tier. Ooh, wow, I'm surprised by this one. Hammer got an S tier. Damn, 42 likes on this? William here with the Jigglypuff picture says, As a hammer enthusiast, I must say hammer is the most superior weapon and easily gets S tier. My hammer brothers will gladly agree with me. And apparently all the hammer brothers here here and supporting. Because we got 42 likes on this comment, jeez. Lucas Robo Guy also says, I don't use the hammer, but I chose S. Because these guys are always awesome to have when in hunts. And I have to agree, they're just like the hunting horn players. Hammer players are awesome and I love having them around. Grey Zeal also says, in Monster Hunter World, playing solo hammer with Slugger Secret allows for an absurd amount of knockdowns, especially if you use Crystal Burst or Scatter Nuts to stun the monster further, but overall double the knockdowns of almost all other weapons, and it's pretty dang mobile. Yeah, I have to agree. I don't know if it quite gets an S tier, but you guys voted an S, so it goes into the S. The Hunting Horn also got S tier with a well-deserved 52% of the votes. More than half of the votes is really good. Banksy says, where does Greatsword belong? Points at A tier. Where does Heavy Bowgun belong? Points at S tier. Where does Hunting Horn belong? Points at my heart. 42 likes on this one, Banksy. Good job. 
Call me Ben Bet says, I must tell you that hunting horn manes are children of God. They come to bless us with buffs and heels and even kill monsters for us. So thanks all hunting horn manes and wish you guys keep the passion in creating arts. Vash the Unrivaled says, I don't use it and I don't see myself using it, but props to them. Hunting horn users are one of the coolest guys in Monster Hunter. Roger says, one of those weapons where it's super useful in multiplayer hunts, but you literally never see anyone using it. That's true, it's, uh, I think it's about a 1% usage rate, actually. So, for the hunting horn, S tier. Alright, the lance got a B tier. That is where I ended up putting it as well. Let's find out why, though. Mason here says, Lance is the epitome of, you won't always notice me, but I'm always here. If you're the Lance user that makes it your goal to block the Fatalis Code Breath to save that one rando out of position, you, sir, deserve a medal. Can every weapon do that, actually? I might have to test that for a video. My leg here says, I've made Lance and Hunting Horn forever, and with Lance I've learned that it's not about dodging, it's about countering. It's a whole different playstyle that is honestly way more fun than a lot of people realize. And me playing Lance recently, I have to definitely agree with my leg. But Lance is actually a super fun and awesome weapon. With Tank it says, Lance main here. Lance is a manly weapon, oozing with confidence, a gentleman's tool. Designed for the strong to stand in front of the monster and shoulder that dive bomber meteor. Truly, the monster shall not pass. Hell yeah, dude. So Lance obviously gets, uh, I guess, a B tier. <laughs> the Gun Lance also got a B tier. Rightful says, Gun Lance is easily S in my eyes. When you know how to play it, position, and have the decoration skills to build it up properly, it doesn't go as shallow as just take all the attack jewels, exploits, or whatever offense jewels you can and call it a day. I definitely don't consider it a pick up and play bare bones kind of weapon, which is why I assume people would rate it lower when just wanting to try it out. But man, is it funny to block almost any attack you want. Ideally, you should be bunny hopping out of the way and hitting anywhere you want on a monster and still clearing hunts fast AF. The damage is insane for how consistently you can blast a monster without penalty. Like, don't even get me started on the worm stake blast, which lets you get even more explosive damage in when you set off explosions near where you injected it into the monster. Straight up free DPS, and all it costs you is some slinger ammo. Sylveon Surfer, a longtime supporter of the poles in general as well. Gunlance, my beloved. S tier, obviously. I don't care about speed runs or damage charts. I care about one thing and one thing only. Full bursting everything in the game to death. I believe that you can't be a bad person if you main Gunlance. <laughs> Well, I don't main Gunlance, but I hope that means I'm not a bad person too, for putting it into B tier, unfortunately. And for the light go gun, we have a solid and well-deserved A tier, I believe. A tier because of its ability to sustain damage through the whole fight and can be used to support a whole team with status elements and quick sheathing for wide range. Not S tier because bow and heavy bow gun are cracked, says Cross Polaris. Vries says, hands down the best support weapon for crowd control and wide range. Love helping out other hunters with it and just keeping the monster crowd controlled for half of the fight. Easy S tier for me. Cake of Poke says, Light Bow Gun belongs in Miss Cake tier, cause that's the only weapon I know. By the way guys, if you don't know, Cake of Poke is also a Monster Hunter content creator, and it turns out that she has new merch here. So please go check out her merch, go check out her channel, go give her a sub, and maybe consider buying something. It looks like her products come from Redbubble and I've been considering it myself. But shout out to you, Cake of Poke. But it looks like Light Bow Gun is going into the A tier. And now for the counterpart of the Light Bow Gun, the Heavy Bow Gun, a 56% voltage rate, oh my gosh, into S tier. Pow Wow Ken says, the best weapon in the game for tanking, DPS, versatility, and it's also one of the easiest to use. Anyone who doesn't rank it S is just coping. The Arnoldfication says, Giga S tier, very OP lol. The only real drawback I can think of is bow guns aren't that good early game because the ammo isn't as accessible and you can die pretty easily in solo hunts if you're not careful, and I have to agree with that. Captain Gmo says, has very good damage, shield, and is easy to learn. All the qualities I think as an S tier weapon should have. The slower movement and dodge are the only weakness, but the shield covers it. S tier, and I have to solely agree with this comment right here. I think it summed it up all pretty well. So, the heavy bow gun, where are we? S tier. The bow got an S tier with a 54% voltage rate. Very good. Captain Shake and Bake says, I'm a bow main, so biased, but absolute S tier for me. 
Yes, a few monsters in world are not suited for it, but overall Bo is a mobile elemental killing machine, and nothing beats the satisfaction of toppling a monster with a fully charged bow dance shot. Wolf Hunted says Bo is one of the most satisfying weapons to master because it's often hard to tell the difference between a good and a bad bow user unless you use it yourself. The feeling of just barely dancing outside of the monster attacks while it's raining arrows on it with one of the many elemental bow sets you've made. It may not be the flashiest, but it has a certain elegance to it. Especially considering you're probably going to get one shot of your hit at all against some of the hardest monsters. Claramel says, It's not overwhelmingly the best anymore since the Iceborne Endgame hunts were pretty unkind to its playstyle. Fatalis, Alatrion, Arc Tempered Velcana, but it's still S tier. I'd only have Heavy Bow Gun, Sword and Shield, and Greatsword over it. And also the Glitching Gun Lance. So the bow goes into S tier. Coming into the final few here, we have the Insect Glaive and a solid A tier with a 45% voting. That's not too bad. Zikro says, I love how it's so hard not to give these collections of unique and diverse attacks that we call weapons anything lower than S. They're all just so carefully crafted. That being said, I think Insect Glaive itself deserves A or B because even at endgame, gathering essence is a chore and Rise has opened my eyes about how cool Kinsex attacks could be. Blue Raptor says it is the Clutch Claw weapon. It actually feels built around Clutch Claw play. The aerial Clutch Claw attack and the slinger drops for Kinseg boost, as well as the Clutch Claw attack being quick and doing decent damage, makes it feel amazing. And I also forgot to mention consistent mounting. The weapon itself might be the most unique weapon in the game, and nothing else that does anything like it. Extremely fun weapon, good damage, and an amazing role in a multiplayer setting. S tier, and I don't even play it that often, lol. So we're going into A tier, unfortunately, not S, but A. Switch Axe also got A tier. Foxy says, I love Switch Axe. It's such a cool weapon, and it's been my main since Try. That is the game it was introduced, if you don't know. It just gets better and better in each new version of the game. That said, it is in no way S or A tier in Iceborne. ZSD spam and amp slash damage aside, it is a melee weapon that does respectable damage. It isn't like Greatsword where it always does big damage. It has an upkeep cost, which is uh, amp state and sword gauge. Then it has no defensive options, which that alone pretty much keeps it out of S tier in my opinion. A solid B tier, and there's nothing wrong with that. Now, if it still had that sexy Valor style elemental discharge, it would still be B tier, but it would be S tier and sexiness. Zoro, a longtime supporter of the channel as well, says S tier easily. That's coming from a hammer main. Late game slash strong builds that make it that much more powerful. Rock steady plus health regen augmentation equals that one attack that drills into the monster spam and it's OP. Wasn't that like the number one Fatalis cheese strat when he was out? And yes, it was. You could easily solo Fatalis with the proper ZSD, the zero sum discharge uh, build with a rock steady mantle and a temporal mantle and your full tool specialist and it's, it's broken. It looks like the combination of these though landed in A tier. Finally, we have the Charge Blade at a 67% S tier voting rate. I think that was the highest today. Correct me if I'm wrong, everybody. As a Charge Blade main with more than 1,200 hunts, I'm happy to see it in S tier, says Hunter Monster Hunter. Bongwater Bojack says, once mastered, it's an easy S. So much damage. Such a wide range of applications. Looks so damn good. It's basically S and S plus. What makes me drop it to A, however, is the difficulty. Plenty of weapons will match its combat effectiveness without needing to commit as much time to learning them. I have to agree with Bojack here. Beamer says, maybe the most fulfilling weapon in the game to master. The skill ceiling is so high, and it has so many tools in its kit. Forces you into close range, forces you to learn monsters' attack timings, pays off big openings, has multiple playstyles, and can even do elemental. A complex, but beautiful weapon. I have to agree, the Charge Blade is very, very good. I think it's one of the uh, most unique weapons they've designed, and I think it's a really cool weapon. S tier. So it looks like some of the major differences is that in your guys' tier list, uh, the B tier is missing the bow, and I think that's rightfully slow for most players. My tier list just has the bow and B because I feel like it's just really hard to get it online. Um, it's also lacking in Moveset, in my opinion. So these are the final results of the tier lists. Um, it looks like you guys have a lot more weapons placed into the S tier, or actually just a couple more than mine. And the only two weapons you do have in the B tier are both of the lances, as you guys all voted the bow into the S tier as well. 
It looks like the hammer even made it into S tier, which is actually pretty phenomenal. The only things I don't agree with as much is the long sword being an S tier and I guess just the bow, but otherwise they're pretty similar tier lists. I think we all have it knocked out pretty well, but overall I think they're actually pretty similar. We all have the charge blade in S tier, the heavy bow gun, the hunting horn, the great sword. Uh, you guys place the sword and shield in A, which is just a step below S, and we both have the lancers in the B tier. I think that we did a pretty good job, all things considered. At the end of the day, I don't really believe that there are any bad weapons in Monster Hunter. There are of course some weapons that outperform others, but that's only when you're min-maxing for like top damage and stuff like that. In reality, all these weapons have their place with the right players, and I believe it's up to us, the players, to determine what weapon we like because it either feels good, whether we like the damage, or maybe we just like to look cool when we use it. Like I said, I'm a fan of the big, big damage, but I'm also a fan of very flashy attacks. When it comes to my placements of the weapons on my tier list, and even the community's tier list, they are indeed definitive and you must listen to what I say and use the weapons that I put only into S tier. Nah, jokes aside, take everything with a grain of salt. Everybody has their tier lists, everybody has their own personal bias, and while I try not to be too biased, it is always hard to let it slip in. There is no tier list out there without any bias whatsoever. So if you want to be a super uber charge blade main and have the big brain with the big damage, go for it. If you like the lance because you just like to stab all day and like to stick to the monster light glue, then that's what you should do. But that's gonna do it for today, guys and gals. Hope you enjoy the Monster Hunter World 2024 definitive tier list until Monster Hunter Wilds comes out. The only other thing I'm wondering is how do you guys feel about these lists after you've seen it in this video? Do you guys like my tier list more or do you like the community voted tier list more? Do you agree with the placements in the S ranking and the B rankings of the tier lists? And do you hate me or what for putting the bow in B tier? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I try to get the most of them and I always take them into consideration for my future content. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. The community for this channel is growing so rapidly and I cannot express how thankful I am for that. We have a Discord server on my main channel page if you're interested in that, but otherwise I'm gonna be covering Monster Hunter World content all the way up until the release of Monster Hunter Wilds before we all eventually hop on there. So if you want to stay updated on any info for Monster Hunter Wild, or you just want some more videos on Monster Hunter World, or you want to play with me even in my live streams or in the Discord, then hit that sub button. But that being said, I'm signing off. This has been Terraza, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace!